What's up, what's up? It's another episode of Booze and Reviews. It's your man Moogle, your boy Trouble your boy, and your man's critique. Watch your mouth. Hey, we back with another episode and another review. The review this week is The Thing. And this is Critique's pick. I'm gonna let him go on and get it started off. Hey, like Moogle said, man. Hey, this is my pick, it was the thing. For October, we're gonna run this thing into horror flicks, horror movie month. And the reason I picked this, because it was my pick, T-Roy brought up the idea, let's keep it rolling. And I picked this just to give a big fuck you to him because I knew he was gonna pick it. So, and I wanted to see his face when I did. And his face, boy, look at his face. Boy, his face dropped. But um, yeah, this was, but um, even though he was gonna pick it, I felt that uh, I had to give y'all the uh, best pick I could. And the thing, is uh, one of those horror movies that I would also say in it ranks uh, top five in horror flicks and it ranks top 25 to me of all time movies. It's somewhere in my top 25 of all time, all genres. Um, uh, adapted from the John Carpenter book. And this movie, like, when you watch it now, you actually see the brilliance of the movie. It, um, it was new. At this in nineteen, it was made in nineteen eighty two, mm -hmm. and uh, I believe somewhere around this time, I think this really popped off the the movie makers to say, "Hey, shit do come from. We think shit do come from outer space, and like, what would happen if it come down into America? This is nineteen eighty two now, mm -hmm. and uh, all we was having was Michael. We didn't even have Freddie yet. I don't believe." In 1982, mm -hmm. right. we had Michael and we had a Jason. Mm -hmm. We might have had a uh, a uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, mm -hmm. yeah. um, and we might have had what's your boy Anthony Hopkins' uh, movie? What he's good for with the, his mama? Uh, you talking about? Oh, Psycho. 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 Anthony Perkins. Yeah. Anthony Perkins. What did yeah. I say? Yeah. Anthony Hopkins. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's Hannibal. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anthony Perkins. <laughs> now, which is like these are just serial killers with. You know, they knives and, you know, going crazy. So, and in this movie, with your boy Kurt Russell is in, that's another reason this movie, like, you have a young, smooth-faced Kurt Russell. You got T.K. What's T.K.? T.K. Carter. T.K. Yeah. Carter in it. Um, uh, I didn't know at the time that Childs, whoever played Childs, what's his real Keith name? Keith David. Keith David mm -hmm. was upcoming. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I believe this might have been around like his first like big break too. Mm -hmm. But the cast is dope. Uh, this guy named Windows. You got this guy named Doc. Awesome, brilliant movie. The concept is good. I, nobody has made. I don't think nobody up to this day has made a movie with this concept as good as this was. Like I said, 1982, and um, and um, basically it's just a. An organism that uh, crash landed to Earth, been here for some X amount of years, and what it does, it gets into you and it imitates your life form. Um, if you give it enough time, it imitates your, it. It gets into you, becomes you, but then becomes itself at the same time. But it can imitate you the way that you already are, if given enough time. And that concept right there in 1982. I don't believe people understood that, you know, that it was brilliant, that it was fantastic. It was an idea. I think we looked at it, when we finally saw the movie, we looked at it as just a horror movie and let's just see if it's good. But I watched it, um, I've seen it like maybe two or three times before I've seen it, like for the review. And it was like a while back. But now in my connoisseurship of movies, <laughs> this movie was so freaking brilliant. They had unlimited bottles of JD, number one. <laughs> um, it's called Justerini and Brooks. Um, Y'all, everybody seen this bottle in the liquor store. Somewhere. Yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah. Sale, I'm pretty sure sales went up after this movie. Um, like I said, you got a young, smooth-faced Kurt Russell. And the movie is so funny. It's I won't say it's jumpy, jumpy, scary. But it has you covering your mouth. You know, it has you, like, turning away, asking, like, is it done yet? And um, 
like you got, uh, oh man, there's so many parts that I can tell you about, but I'm gonna let everybody go, mm-hmm. and then and then we'll come back to like all those little parts. But I give this movie a full cup. Number one, the concept was original at the time. Number two, it's done brilliantly. Like this is, yes, yeah, a horror flick, but it gives it gives you the it gives you the idea of like it wasn't just put together in like maybe a month. This movie took some time. They are in Antarctica, number one. That's what the movies say. It also looks like Antarctica. I really think that they was on location in Antarctica. I don't think in 1982 you can CGI that much snow. No. Kurt Russell beard was fucking. It was like the snow was melting. He had icicles all coming down his beard. Uh, mm-hmm. It was people like snot and shit just freezing all up on their lips. That shit looked <laughs> real. Yeah. Um, uh, I give this movie a full cup. Uh, strictly because at its time, at its time, I don't think anybody actually really knew that this was about to go down as one of the best 25, 30 movies of all time in the horror movie genre. Um, it was a launching pad for a lot of, um, for a couple of these guys' career. Um, uh, it was just brilliantly done. Like I said, it was taken from a John Carpenter book, so right there, you can't go wrong, but Whoever directed it did him justice, like did the book justice. I haven't read the book, but I'm pretty sure it went something like that because it was John Carver. So you get a full cup from me. And then I'm going to start telling y'all about the, after uh, moving on T-Roy, I'm going to start telling y'all about the parts that really just had me tickled. I think a little pee came out a couple times. (laughs) (laughs) Yep, so, yep, the thing... um, Watching it now and then have to go back and think like, okay, when did I see this and what age was I? But to me, um, this was, again, uh, now seeing it, now this was one of them uh, government conspiracy movies. Basically, they always knew or they always been looking for something that they knew happened, but then now they're doing the exploration. Mm-hmm. And so uh, it's funny, like, in this movie, it's like they in some they in no man's land. So it's like, where you gonna get your help from? If your help ain't there, you done. Mm-hmm. Um, then come to then when you actually get to see what the alien looks like. But you know the uh, the mu- the music the, the the suspense music mm-hmm. start when they go back to the uh, to the block of ice they cut out and, yeah. it's, and it's just gone. Yeah, and, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's just gone and it's like. What was in it? And then nobody knows until shit started happening. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, it was a good movie. I like the storyline. Uh, again, the government conspiracy thing, that always, that that definitely plays into this. Because it's like, well, they didn't know what it was. Because they really didn't know what it was. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, they knew it was something that we ain't got nothing for right now. Other than we'll always win to fire. Mm-hmm. But, right. And then that still didn't win. Yeah. Um, but like the movie overall, actors did, you know, they good thing. Keith David, that's the same dude when we uh, reviewed uh, they, they, they Live. They live. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he kind of was already, to me, but that but the, uh, They Live is after that. Right? Yeah, They Live yeah, is that's after, after that. that. Mm-hmm. So he already was in the in the genre, in the mm-hmm. sense. He was already in it. Yeah. Um, just to pick them off one by one, that type, that all that always plays out. Like, well, what happened to Roberts? Nobody right, know they, what happened to the motherfucker. It started with the dog first. Yeah, dog. then they show back up. They stopped the dog. They show back up, and then it's like, hey man, then the motherfucker not talking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you know something off with him. Right. But at the end of the day, I get this movie three quarter cut. Good, okay. definitely a good movie. Mm-hmm. Definitely good story. Um, and we was talking about this, like, so CGI comes in the late, mid to late 90s. Yeah. This is like what he, what he, what he called practical, uh, what do you say? Practical, practical effects. Practical, practical effects. effects. Yeah. So like, you taking like a lump of clay, uh, a lump of Play-Doh or whatever, mm-hmm. right? And, and then just moving it at a bunch of seconds mm-hmm. and then make it look a certain way. Yeah. Uh, but even with that, they did good they with did that. They did a good job. You know what I'm saying? To make you even think, uh, because when you pull it up, it's say alien horror. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Still a horror movie. Yeah. But 
to, to you know that they pulling something from outer space. Uh, but yeah, I get his three quarters of a cup. Good movie. Uh, definitely goes out in a classic. Uh, Money wise, this movie didn't kill it. It just it, it it made some money, but it ain't kill it. But again, it take a movie like that to probably be out a year or two, and then it catch on, and everybody yeah. start liking it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think real filmmakers, real filmmakers, I think this movie set a standard. Even though, like you said, it didn't like crush the box office. It didn't crush it, but yeah, it, but it it, it, it definitely set a standard. Mm-hmm. For, um, Outside of your regular serial killer crazy, yeah, oh, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's easy to do those, of course. But when you're gonna go into the alien and mm-hmm. you know how are we gonna bring this across? What's it gonna look like? Exactly, you know, all that good shit. That's what made uh, it brilliant people, for me. Yeah, is people gonna really? Is it believable? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And this is believable mm-hmm. that somebody will go on the exploration, find some shit that they don't know what it is, mm-hmm. and you know, shit yeah. minds up trying to take yeah. over. Yeah. Yeah, I'll give it three quarters of the cup. Where you at, T-Roy? Man, first off, I want to say that Critique can kiss my ass <laughs> for picking this movie. Y'all don't remember, I picked this for, you know, we had a voter session and oh, I had chose this to be my pick and um, it was off to five Deli Venoms. My movie. And I think out of spite, Critique decided to pick this movie. I did. <laughs> I did. I know he did. I did. But, um... There is like so much analysis with this movie off top before I even get into like my little likes and feels. I'm giving this movie a fifth of that JP right there. Ah. Mm-hmm. This is one of my favorite movies made by my favorite director of all time, John Carpenter. Um, oh, the, the whole idea. I'm of, sorry, was I wrong? It was a book first, right? So it was a book by, um, uh, what was the guy's name? John Campbell? It was a book called uh, "Who Goes There." It was okay, short, okay. Uh, he's okay. correcting me, y'all, and I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad y'all are getting the right information. Um, he he took it and made it a movie um, because it was it was also a movie that came out after the book called uh, "The Thing from Another World." Okay, mm-hmm. and um, John Carpenter, his version is like a mix of uh, both of those—the novel and the actual uh, mm. 1951 movie, I believe. I think it came out in fifty. Okay, see, that was Troy's big fuck you to me. <laughs> you know, I gave y'all wrong information, and I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. That's what no. the fuck I get. That's what I get, but that's his fuck you to me. He was over there stewing on that shit like, that means giving so much wrong information. Okay, good one. All right, you got it. Go ahead. I ain't saying shit um, at all. It's so much analysis I have with this movie. Um, I love that the these guys are isolated at this outpost. They, they researchers and biologists and mechanics mm-hmm. and whatnot. And um, this whole feeling of paranoia of like who has the alien inside of them and this you know era of like distrust. Like if this guy might be infected, I might be infected. Nobody mm-hmm. knows. And it made oh. uh, them being isolated. It just it set the whole tone oh. of the movie. Yeah. Um, the acting was off the hook. Kurt, uh, Kurt Russell. Um, kicking Kirk ass, McCready. taking names as usual. Yeah, I saw sure was. Say Kirk McCready. <laughs> Kirk McCready, right? <laughs> McCready was uh, Kurt Russell's character. Exactly. I'm mad. RJ I'm McCready. Mad. Um, mm-hmm. Keith David doing his thing. I, like y'all said, I think this was like his first big role. Mm-hmm. He went on the other great roles, you know. And um, yeah, this 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 is one of my favorite movies. Um, it got a lot of shock moments. Um, I particularly when I first seen it, I actually jumped. At the scene with the uh, with the defibrillator, we call it the, the, mm. the defibrillator. Mm-hmm. Scene. Shit caught me, caught me off guard. Yeah, um, <laughs> didn't know where that was going, where it went. You know, mm. nigga might have peed a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely peed a few times. Uh, but it was an awesome scene. The the effects was done by um, what's the guy's name? Uh, Rob Bottin. He did like the howling and he did mm. the thing and uh, some other stuff. But um. Uh, special effects was off the hook. John mm-hmm. Carpenter worked on the score too. Um, yeah, all right, I give this movie a fifth to JB. Mm-hmm. There you go. All right, everybody gave you reviews. Now, I like this movie. I forgot to tell y'all the what uh, T Roy just mentioned. When this alien, um, when they started learning more about it, mm-hmm. the distrust that the guy started yeah. having was off the chain like the way it was brought across on screen was off the chain there's no words i can explain 
to tell you how funny and how actually correct it was in in that movie. I in that know time. About to talk like about it was <laughs> it was the time to where McCready was doing a blood test. Uh, yeah. They were doing a blood test yeah, and he had all the surviving um uh team members mm -hmm. tied up in a chair yep. and they made a blood test not outside of these guys' range you know because they had everybody there. they had a doctor they had a specialist for everything yep. so it wasn't like these was some oh oh like off um uh, off the street guys and out of the blue they were scientists and doctors and came up with a blood test no, they had these people there, mm -hmm. which made it in 1982 that we didn't realize at the time that made it feasible and or believable mm -hmm. uh, now, especially. But in this scene, you know, he's testing people's blood and, and and like the first two or three people did nothing happen. And everybody was like, man, this is some bullshit. You know, the person that was doing it was Kurt Russell. Mm -hmm. He wasn't the the actual uh, uh, doctor or the scientist or the guy that was doing aut autopsies. Mm -hmm. But you have to watch the movie to see why it was McCready doing this. But after everybody was saying, oh, this is some bullshit, he did one, and shit just went crazy. Yes, it shit did. just <laughs> went, all the, it worked. I just want to tell you, shit just went crazy. But then after that, <laughs> like, <laughs> when the distrust that t Roy was talking about that brought along the cast, like, when one person was deemed clean and he was already thinking about the person that was next to him who was tied up, like, was like, get me the fuck out of here. I'm right. clean. <laughs> this nigga really, <laughs> he really is the one. Get me off of here right now. That shit was funny. Another fun, you knew that Kurt Russell was about to be the man first five minutes of the, well, I would say the first ten minutes of the movie. He was playing the computer in chess. Kurt mm. Russell's first words was cheating, bitch. <laughs> first words of the movie was cheating, bitch. When, when the computer beat him, and how dope is it that metaphorically he killed the computer? He opened the, the uh, disk drive and poured some JB down the disk drive, and the computer died. <laughs> right then and there, only when I watched it two days ago, right then and there, I was like, the motherfucker killed the computer. <laughs> Who kills the computer? You can destroy a computer. He killed the computer. That was one of the funniest parts. Um, another funny part is when they locked up a guy named Doc. They thought that he would... Actually, no. It was when he actually... Uh, Blair. Was it Blair? The, old, the, the doctor? Uh... Uh, the one they locked like away after he went crazy. Yeah, that was Blair. Okay, yeah. Blair, Blair, Blair. Blair. Okay, yeah. I call him Doc. He, he was a doc. He was a doctor. Though. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. When he started, he destroyed the all means of transportation, all means of communication. He yeah. went to shooting at people. Yes, he did. And when the bullets ran out, Keith David's character wanted to try to talk to him. He said, "Ah, right, you motherfucker, I'll kill you." He shot at him a few times, and then the gun went empty. He looked at it and he threw the gun. You got to see the way he threw the, he throws the gun. The shit is funny as hell. I can't explain it to you. I'm not I'm not a writer. I'm not a producer. I'm not like a screen effect. That right there, like that had me tickled pink so much. You just got to see how he did it. And it was so believable at the moment that it was like if I was Keith Davis character, I would have laughed like, I know they broke broke character a few times <laughs> because it was so authentic. And this dude, like the way he destroyed all the communication devices, the way he destroyed all the the tractors, the helicopter, and right when they got, I don't think nobody seen this, but they talked about it. When he ran out of bullets and they finally rushed in to get him, they rushed him with a table. He had an axe. They rushed him with a table. Finally got him down. Nobody saw McCready. Oh, Carl Russell beat his ass. Dog! Gave him two quick ones. Gave him two quick ones. Yeah. You gotta see this shit. Yeah, like, I can't up. explain it. I can't explain it. But when I say there are parts of this movie that will have you cracking up, but you're scared to laugh so long because... You're about to get a horror part. You're right. right. You're about to get a horror part. But when they rush... And, and this dude is like 68 years old. 
Kurt did not give a fuck. No. When they got it, I was like, bop, bop. <laughs> and somebody said, good one, McCree. Right. <laughs> and that was it. But that's what I wanted to say on that part. Like, you're going to get your funnies in. You're going to get your uh, your uh, jumpy scaries in. And, and, and throughout, like, the whole aspect of the movie. You are, like, you're going to love it, especially in these times. I, I believe it holds up. In the horror genre now, did they find now. they found something in the blood though, right? That would like that would set them apart from being human. Yeah, they found something in the blood. I the, mean. the the thing actually was uh, splicing inside the, the human cells or something. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so they realized, yeah, and they realized that uh, the thing, like once it's in you, it's going to protect itself regardless from any harm. Regular, like, uh, uh, any type of harm. So, dang, I don't even want to go into it. At first, you going to it. Oh, yeah, too. okay. At first, too. at first, the first um moment. blood, the first idea of a blood test was to get um, clean blood and then take somebody's blood presently mm -hmm. and then mix it and look for a look for a reaction. Mm -hmm. But then. Somebody got to the clean blood supply. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. like, so, and that go like, it's so brilliant that when I told you, when I was giving you my review at first, the, the alien imitates you to the point that, you know, it has, it wants to mimic everything about you, your actions, your, your appearance. Mm -hmm. But when it's threatened, it'll also, it'll take over you to where, you know, like, Self-preservation wise, and that's why somebody got into the blood. Somebody that was tainted got into the blood mm -hmm. to destroy it because the alien knew, oh, is that what y'all are talking about? Well, whoever I'm in, I'm about to taint, I'm about to get them to destroy the blood, mm -hmm. which was immaculate. Yeah. Like, that shit is not far-fetched. Like, I mean, it's course. that smart. Yeah, it's, it's, it's from brilliant. Outer, it's from outer space. This shit is brilliant. You gotta be smarter than yeah. Yeah, some average humans. It was man. freaking weird. Man, it's brilliant. Yo, yeah, classic. Man. But Kurt Russell killed a computer the first ten minutes of the movie, <laughs> and then his first words of the movie: "If if you did not see this movie in like around 1982, 83, 84, if you see it now, you could tell Kurt Russell is going to be the one. Well, somebody at the end that's probably going to survive because his first two words was cheating, bitch, <laughs> talking to a computer, and then he killed the host, <laughs> killed her." Yeah, so like, gotta love it. Yeah, man. Um, I wanna, I wanna uh, kind of ask y'all while we on camera about the ending. Um, yeah. The very ending of the movie, you got, and of course, uh, I just wanna throw it out there that the black dude survived. Yeah. One of the uh, movies that we forgot, exactly. we asked that yeah. one time. Yeah. Black dude survived. And it would be Keith David. It, yeah, it mm -hmm. gotta be Keith David. Him and Kurt Russell, they're at the end. You know, everything is blown up. Supposedly the thing is dead, mm -hmm. and you got these two talking, and I love the whole the thing. The ending uh, kind of stuck to the tone of the movie because when you see them talking to each other, it's still like this like they they really feeling each other. Mm -hmm. I'm like, bro, yeah. I don't know if you really right. got it. Right. In you. Yeah. I might have it in me, but mm -hmm. we just gonna sit here and chill. And they kind of knew that um, once that fire went out, they probably was gonna freeze to death. Mm -hmm. But um, this is like ongoing debate that I always get involved in online that. Uh, one of them was the thing, and who was it? Um, a lot of people try to say that it was Keith Davis' character because while he was talking, there was no breath. While he was talking, out, he was out in the cold talking, and there was no breath. I did not wow. know that. Uh, I John, that. John know. Carpenter, they they kind of uh, toned that down. They said that that might that might have been like a uh, um, an error as far as like you know cinematography. Right. Yeah. That you know. Uh, that it really had nothing to do with it, but mm -hmm. if you're not, if you're breathing, and ain't nothing coming out your mouth, it was like thirty below. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah you gotta be able. Mm -hmm. Also, I able. want y'all to watch this part too. Kurt Russell, he's gonna give Charles the bottle for them to drink. Right. And supposedly, a lot of people were saying that that bottle was filled with gasoline, and he was looking at Charles like, "You drink it from this, but it's really gasoline. You're trying to pretend like you're human." Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, and, exactly. So a lot so of people were saying like. Well, I was saying, kind of eyeing him like, yeah. you know, kind of side eyeing him like, bro, that's you. It's you. 
I'm gonna have to be racist and say I believe that the thing was child's. Damn! <laughs> He's black dude. I don't know what kind of racism you got. Maybe reverse racism. <laughs> alien, but I'm going to alien racism. Yeah, alien racism. Alien racism. Like I'm going against the black dude on this one. Number one, Kurt Russell can do no wrong with me, <laughs> and I'm sorry, but I think I think the little space monkey is the motherfucking thing because while everything was going down, while McCready was killing everybody, blowing up the thing, making sure he don't leave Kurt uh, Charles. Keith Davis' character, he, did, yeah. he was somewhere out. He thought he saw a a team member. Uh, uh, he says he thought he saw a team member, Blair, and he went after him. Yeah, yeah, but magically, yeah. he comes back yeah. when when uh, McCready, Kurt Russell's yeah, character, Kurt Russell's character, yeah, then killed everything. Yeah. And then he was like, yeah, I thought I saw Blair. I went after him. Whoop -de -whoop. No, you, no, you little monkey. <laughs> <laughs> What did Denzel say in uh, in uh, Glory? <laughs> no, he's the thing. I'm gonna have to get racist. I'm sorry. Man, Charles went to the liquor store. <laughs> he came back yeah, just in time. Store, it's it's like... def it's definitely not McCready. It, it can't be McCready because number one, well, that's because you watching him do majority of the work. Yeah, he did. He did the grunt work. But that, hey, but, you, but see, that's that. But see, that's the whole thing of the the brilliance, of, like you said, of the story. Man, it get you brilliant. thinking about. Yeah. Dog, he wasn't there. Yeah. He wasn't even there. Nowhere. And all throughout the movie, Keith Davis' character was the, like, he's the one that yeah. is a go-getter. He's the one that's the no bullshit. I ain't taking no shit. I don't trust none of y'all crackers. I will kill every last one of y'all for an hour and 30 minutes. But the last 15, when shit hits the fan, he's nowhere. To, oh, he fine. Oh, he thought he saw somebody and ran off. No. Yeah. No, you little booger monkey. <laughs> you are the thing right now. Oh, and the reason, another brilliant aspect of the movie. You might be wondering why they're calling it the thing. That's because they ain't had nothing. To, like it was, it was new. It was, it was nothing they had ever seen before. So when they was talking about it, they'll be like, okay, so somebody else might be the thing, or that thing is this. This. this that's the move. That was, I thought that was dope. Like, yeah, yeah I thought that was dope. Like, yeah. I look at little small little shit like that. But I thought that was dope. But I think that's the brilliance in the writing. Yeah, it is. Because uh, something that can mimic, it's kind of like what, Body Snatchers? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or the movie can mimic. mimic. See? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can mimic you mm -hmm. and then just play along and you will never know. Mm -hmm. I, so, yeah. I told you, I believe this movie set the standard for every movie that tried to come close to some shit like this, and I ain't seen no movie that has done it exactly. better than they did it in 1982. Two. Yeah, this shit was awesome. 82? 80s. Mm -hmm. Great movies, great time. Yeah. Yep, so it was the 82 that was right. It was 82. Two years before, two years before the Tigers won the Tigers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this, mm -hmm. this came out in uh, 82. Uh, they, uh, they didn't, you said it, you mentioned it earlier, didn't do good in the theaters. Mm. Um, it was it won, but it didn't win. Yeah, big. that's all. But if you ask any any movie goer that takes their movie going serious to this day, they're going to put the thing in their top five of horror yeah. horror movies. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. got to. It, it's it's not there. It, it's not in their top five just because they were paid off for. Right. You know, they might like John Carpenter. No, it is really. Uh, Standing the test of time to this day. That's why I still in their top. And, I'm a, and the director definitely play a part. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely the director play a part. Yeah, you, you know some directors thing. get love for a movie that may not even have hit or done well, mm -hmm. but it's because of their whole filmography. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, yeah. they whole Dope, yeah. movies you've made. You're All right, right. we're gonna give you the. You know, we're gonna give you the benefit. Yeah, we'll give you a pass mm -hmm. on some bullshit you do. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Well you you know, hey, you yeah. had to keep yourself going, you took mm -hmm. some money to do a movie, yeah. didn't pay it out well, but yeah. I yeah. think he was coming off of uh, Halloween and Escape from New York at this time and Oh shit. So well, Precinct thirteen and Escape from New York movie. Starman, right. you know, he had he had some notches on this Oh I forgot about Starman. Yeah. yeah. He had some notches yeah. on this Yeah, yeah. yeah so, uh, they said this one didn't do good because it came out uh, same time as E.T. 
And that's and that's literally E.T. was like a that's a family movie for portrayal of yeah. And you can take your kids to see it. My mama took me to see the thing. It's the nice alien versus the bad. Bad, of course. I hated yeah. E.T. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I, I did. I, 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 his fucking head was too big. His eyes was on. He, he always looked like he was at. Like he a was neck irritated. bone. He like he a neck bone. Was, yeah, he was irritated. <laughs> he was like, I like E.T. I like E.T. He was terrible. He did not listen. And like, guess what? He made millions in, in, in uh, he merchandise. He made children. Yeah. Them dogs sold like yeah. goddamn. Because there's so many people was in, the, in the actual world that look like E.T. That they knew what they were doing. <laughs> they knew what they were doing, man. I got a few oh, family man. members that look like E.T. Uh, yeah. yeah, so of course that was going to hit good because they took like. Well, it was for kids. It was, yeah, it was yeah, literally yeah, for, kids. for kids. It's yeah. always, it's, uh, in population, it's always going to basically mm -hmm. be more kids. Yeah. Than, you know, that, you know, we got to give them something. Yeah. yeah. The thing will run a muck on E.T. E <laughs> I dare E.T. to go to Antarctica and fuck with the thing. Hey, the thing that hey, imitate hey, his ass. He had that glow finger, homeboy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and we all knew what E.T. wanted to do to so Elliot with that glow finger, little freak ass. Hey, who the hell? Nobody actually, actually realized that E.T. was actually a pervert. I think like, they should make a, uh, he was wearing the mama clothes as soon as he got there. Yes, yeah. so he was a fucking pervert. Right he was. And he always showed Elliot his glow finger like, yeah, yeah. Man. <laughs> turn over, bend over. Elliot just wasn't going for the shit. Elliot was oh, like, look, dude, my uncle already do that. I already know that. Right. <laughs> So, you know, I mean, just not to get off the... I think the they, but I think they need to... I, man, maybe they need to make an evil version of E.T. Oh, that shit was really dope. See, I don't see that. Oh, see the evil, the evil version of E.T.? E. Yeah, I ain't nobody standing on E.T. I was chopping that motherfucker up with that finger. Okay, yeah. well, now nah, he got see. special power with that yeah. finger. Right? He can make a bike fly. You know, he can raise I can do that probably. Yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I can raise a spaceship, nigga. All I gotta do is hallelujah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Go to some Jedi training. Right. I can raise a spaceship. I can tell a spaceship to come and get me. You know, yeah, but man. imitate a life form. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And mimic his, his actions, his words. You know what I'm saying? And then when you are threatened, say, fuck this life form. I gotta go somewhere else. Man, somebody's head turned into a spider because this dude because the thing was trying to get away. Et ain't doing that. So man. look, so look, that was a survival instinct mm. of the alien, right? Yeah, yeah of the, the thing. Feet. Yeah. So, so in order to survive, I need to mimic. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It wasn't to stay alive, but it was just to blend in. Mm -hmm. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It wanted to blend in. Yeah. So that, it, was, it was. This movie was brilliant. All the bullshit brilliant. aside, man, this movie was brilliant and. Is, is actually doubly brilliant because it was a, you got to remember, this is 1982. This is 1982. Technically, people ain't that smart in 1982 <laughs> that they are right now. No CGI. You know More what I'm saying? Like practical stuff? Yeah, all these special effects guys had to think and do shit on their own. Like, what can yeah. we what can we do to make this shit happen? And they did it. Yeah. Blow the shit like, like good. Yeah. Like, this, man. man. Yeah. I'm glad I took this from Troy because I got a big fuck you and a good movie out of it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> man, that's just what we do here on Booze yeah, Reviews. Man. Dog. <laughs> Episode of Booze Reviews. It's your man Critique. So watch your mouth, man. And your main man, Trouble T. Roy. Oh, and your goodness. boy, Mugu, man. Oh, my God. Enjoy your movies, man. Go check us out. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, subscribe, yes. and subscribe again. Share it with your friends. Get yourself a drink and watch it. Yeah, and watch it. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah, we out.